So let me introduce Civic Futures and the Horizons Project who've been collaborating together around this research. Civic Futures is a philanthropic initiative co-founded by the Funders Initiative for Civil Society and the Fund for Global Human Rights to mobilize the funding community working across multiple issue areas to push back against national security laws, technologies, and narratives increasingly used by governments around the world to harm civic space. The Horizons Project is an organizing platform focused on strengthening relationships and collaboration between the social justice, peace building and democracy communities in the US and globally. And together we're partnering in a multi-year applied learning project entitled Narrative Engagement Across Difference that seeks to identify, test and learn from narrative practices that support collaboration between and beyond social movements. Julia from Horizons will offer an introductory overview of the context for and approach to this research. So why is narrative so important for us to be incorporating into our work in democratic decline? If you're new to narrative, you may immediately be thinking about the practices of storytelling, of strategic communications. We've all been working on that in the social change industry. It's definitely a part of the narrative practices we've been exploring. But for us and our team, we're really engaging with narrative in that it's a deeper sense to how people are making sense of the world, how human beings make meaning of the world around us through narrative structures. We think in terms of characters and plots and values, often unconsciously. And it's kind of just what makes sense to us. And so there are a ton of narrative streams and the ways of making meaning that run throughout our societies that are affected both by dominant culture, affected by our individual lived experience. And quite honestly, this is heady stuff. But from my experience, once we have this moment of opening our eyes to the power of narrative as sense making, that we understand how each of us are making sense inside of our own heads in distinct ways, our approach to collaborating with others shifts and we interrogate our own narratives and those of others. That's at least been my experience. And so I'm gonna share just two brief slides to help orient a little bit our starting point. As I said, you know, in the case of democratic decline and the agency with which authoritarian actors are wielding very simple stories of fear, of toxic othering, of confusion, the task at hand for us is to help broad-based movements come together. And research shows that the more diverse movements are with the broadest participation within society, working towards those common goals of a democratic pluralistic society to combat authoritarian trends, diversity and breadth of those movements are one of our key success factors. But we all know how hard this is. You're all in the trenches with your partners. You know that this doesn't happen easily. So when we embarked upon the NEED project, we really wanted to look both at the narrative practices that support group collaboration across difference. And this means across identity issues, across geographies, across ideologies, that those collaborations are going to help our movements bridge with those that we may consider other. So this has been an exercise of looking at narrative practices that have implications for both group dynamics, as well as external campaigning and strategic communications that help us be base of support for pro-democratic values, pro-civic freedoms, that agenda. It's not just a progressive agenda that we've been exploring. And so, we started this journey, both with this wonderful research team. We also conducted a series of consultations with a whole bunch of narrative practitioners, trainers, activists, network movement leaders from around the world to hear from them about their challenges in collaborating across difference and also building narrative power and infrastructure within these contexts of very divided societies where there are forces actively trying to erode democracy. So these consultations fed into a lit review that you're going to hear more about now. It was conducted by our research team who looked at 14 different disciplines. And so this was a this was a pretty big assignment. This is from brain and behavioral sciences, future studies, social norms, sacred values, polarization, of course, looking deeply at authoritarianism and democracy, 
social movement literature. And so the report that we're releasing is an overview of those findings. What did we unearth within this lit review, looking at the research, giving insights into narrative practice? And a bit of warning, if you are looking for a how-to guide on exactly what to do, which frameworks to use, where are the tools to support this kind of narrative engagement, it is not that kind of report that includes concrete recommendations, and it wasn't intended to be. This was really intended to raise up some research findings from this multidisciplinary approach intending to really inform the next phase of this project, which is to start experimenting with these practices, both within the relational work, within groups, and the communications and campaigning strategies we develop. So we wanna be testing out these findings. None of these are so prescriptive. It's just bringing together research in a way that I think hasn't been brought together in the same way in the past. Obviously, we're wanting to see what actually works in practice in different movement settings around the world. So this very comprehensive literature review is broken down into three domains. This was something that the team came up with, the research team, narrative legitimacy, narrative power, and narrative complexity. And I am not going to do justice to these definitions, but very briefly, what do we mean so that when you're reading the report, you understand why we organized this really complex, meaty set of literature in these ways. When we talk about narrative legitimacy, we're talking about how narratives help to regulate and determine the nature of our interactions, those interactions between people, how we position ourselves as legitimate, how we position others as legitimate in the stories and in the deep narratives that we're perpetuating, who is worthy, who is good, who is bad. None of us like to be delegitimized. And so what happens when we put that bad label on somebody and the effect that that has on how they're going to interact with our vision, with our messaging, with our invitation to be in relationship with us and our movements? And when we talk about narrative power, we're not necessarily talking about the kind of traditional sense of power kind of in a hierarchical, I have power over you, but rather narrative power in the sense of the dynamics of who has the power to regulate what is acceptable to say, what is not acceptable to say, what are those social norms that are the dominant deep narratives that we all live by that if you are kind of saying or doing something against that, you are kind of labeled transgressive, aren't you? Who has the privilege to determine what we would call dominant narratives? And then finally, in terms of referring to narrative complexity, this is the capacity of any narrative to evolve and change. And in our field, we're really interested in how we're going to change narratives. But the complexity domain is less about changing simple narratives and more about how we're going to be building nuanced, multifaceted descriptions of people and events and values that help us to produce the evolution of stories and meaning making. And of course, this is what is needed for democratic societies. And so a little bit of living the values that we want to be building in the world through our narrative practice. 